So this video has been developed by uh, Robosoft in the scope of the City Mobile European project. Uh, in this project we are working on um, simulation of vehicle concepts and uh, for cybernetic uh, transport systems. So in this uh, urban city environment uh, you have roads. These are two lines and two lines uh, so the length here is 9.5 meters. Um, you have intersections, you can have roundabouts, you can have uh, parking areas here um, and you also have some trees, some uh, shops, whatever you want, some uh, seats, some signalization cones here and of course you got the cyber cars. So here you got three RoboCabs from Robosoft company as well as a SciCab from Robosoft company. Um, so this is not only a visual representation, this is a real dynamic simulation as uh, you can take into the physics world. So in red you have all the environment, fixed elements of the environment and in white you have the bonding boxes that are used for the dynamic computation. So this vehicle, it has a bus, it has inertia and uh, you can uh, interact and compute the slidings uh, and everything. So, uh, as you can see, if I move a bit more here, using a Xbox 360 joypad, I can easily turn my wheels, as I would do in a real robot, move front, move back, and uh, basically control my cybercar. Um, if I get back to the uh, visual environment, you can see that I can't crash in the vehicles here. Uh, that's because we have implemented in the simulations exactly the same algorithms as, as the one that runs in our real robots. Um, so for that I'm going to reduce a bit this window. I'm going to look at the uh, laser viewer. So the, all the, the, the robots here, they have a simulated laser. So I'm going to select the correct robot, which is the SciCab and I'm going to be able to zoom on the laser scan. So these are all the um, virtual scan that uh, impacts the front vehicle. This one is here and you got the rest of the environment. So if I move back with the, uh, with the robot I see my obstacle that moves and turns and so on. So this is uh, based not on the graphics view but on the physics view. Okay, so we know back in the uh, videos for the uh, City Mobile project done by Robosoft. So we're back in the City Mobile environment where we have the uh, SciCab and the three RoboCabs. So what I'm going to show now is how you can uh, manage fleets of robots uh, within either the simulation or uh, real situations when you have real robots. So for that, I'm going to uh, first introduce uh, our um, su supervision environment which uh, I'm going to uh, load a map of this city where I have uh, recorded some trajectories before that I can show you here. Uh, so this is the location of our robots and these are the paths, the trajectories that I have recorded and so that the vehicles can replay them using a trajectory following algorithms. Okay, so um, in this view uh, we're going to have different nodes and arcs that define a graph and we're going to make a centralized provision of the fleet of the robots uh, by first connecting to them so first that for that I'm going to run the simulations again um, so in this scope I have two vehicles that uh, can be managed by the simulation the first Robucar the first Robucab is uh, managed by trajectory following algorithms as well as the SciCab whereas the two uh, following uh, Robby cabs are uh, used using platooning. So I'm going to connect to the first the side cab, which will have the ID number two in this uh, map. And now I'm going to uh, connect to the Robby car, which is the first one, which is going to have the ID number one. So once I have that, I can simply tell my front vehicle, the RoboCab, to go to node maybe number 5. So I'm going to create a need for the supervision system. Go to, I'm going to use a RoboCab robot, ID 1, and I want to go to destination 5. 
I'm going to add that to a list that is managed by the supervisor and send this request. And we're now going to have this robot that is connected in real time to the real robot where I have the list of missions and things that he has to do, position, battery level, and so on, and we can manage the following of that. As you can see here, the vehicles have been following the leader in a platooning mode, and they are moving together. So I can switch the camera to maybe the cockpit number three. So you are inside the robot cab number three, and it's performing platooning while moving in an environment. And the first one is following the trajectory. So we're now going to look at what this vehicle sees. So using again the laser viewer and connecting to the laser sensor number three. Zooming. On the right I have nothing because here I'm on the side of the environment so there's no obstacles. And here you can see that uh, you detect the, the seats and the wall here. And here you have a segment. So the features uh, that we have with the Ruby box is that we can also perform uh, features extraction. So for that I'm going to show you using that landmark viewer uh, interface where I'm going to connect to the third Ruby cab and look at what it sees. And here you can see that sometimes it sees uh, segments that is in the environment but we asked him to follow this segment which is the Ruby cab in front. And so, as you can see, during the motion of the of the robot, we perform platooning, which is in this case in this case simple platooning, where uh, we control the robot to follow and to uh, control this segment so that it's in the uh, zero direction at a given distance. And I have speed uh, control in the longi longitudinal way so that the robots don't crash and it maintains uh, correct distance. So again, here I can get the physics to see that uh, all the wheels are moving, we're computing the slidings and everything. These small boxes here are the laser sensors and uh, a box for the robot. So, um, I'm going to let it finish its turn to get to the next uh, slide. So if I switch camera to the main camera, I'm going to look back for the robots and they should be right here, coming back for us. So now we have the uh, robots that move back to the uh, end of the trajectory, node 1, or maybe my robot here, as you can see, was in the trajectory, so they stopped the different mo robots. and. If I move my vehicle, they continue the trajectory. So I'm going to take it away so everybody can be happy and finish its requirements.